I'm Dei Zhang, Instruction Librarian at Renton Technical College. Welcome to the third video in our fake news series, which will focus on the economics of the virtual world. Each video in the series will have helpful links in the description should you want additional information about the topic. In this video, we'll begin answering the question of why there's so much questionable news and information online in the first place. Specifically, we'll look at the economics that drive the online information ecosystem. Let's start off with a quote from the 2015 book Virtual Unreality by Charles Seif. The media are being driven further and further into the cut and paste realm by the unforgiving economics of post-scarcity information. It's expensive to be a primary news gatherer. This idea of a post-scarcity economy comes from economic theory, and it occurs when goods can be produced so abundantly that they become extremely cheap or free. According to Seif, the good that has now become so abundant or post-scarce is information, and we owe that to the internet. Think about it. Technology has made it cheap and easy to create and distribute content online for anyone with a connection and a device. And while this has democratized information in a way, Seif also highlights the flip side, which is that the general quality of the ever-increasing quantities of information goes down. Let's look a little closer at news information in particular. It's very expensive to do actual news gathering, right? Fact-checking, interviewing witnesses and experts, researching the context and history of the topic, these take a lot of resources. And that's before you get into the writing and editing stages, which require additional resources. Traditionally, those resources had been much greater in newsrooms because newspapers got their revenue from classified ads. 25 years ago, if you wanted to advertise your product or business, one of the main ways was to pay for ads in your local paper. But most of this money is now dried up with the advent of Craigslist and other online advertising wreaking havoc on local journalism. Online, it's a completely different world, a world based on clicks. You're not just competing with the other local newspaper in your city, but you're competing with Netflix, Facebook, YouTube, and millions of other sites that users might choose to click on instead, and they do. Think of each click as a unit of money, and the more clicks you get, the more money you make for your website. This economy based on clicks causes all sorts of weird stuff to happen. For example, native advertising, where ads are embedded in the web page's published content to make them difficult to tell apart from that published content is rampant. And in order to compete, newspapers are forced to squeeze more and more content out of their journalists, or use artificial intelligence to write their articles, or push journalists to build stories around keywords trending on the internet because of search engine optimization, instead of what's actually important to highlight as a news story. All this contributes to an information ecosystem where provocative or sensational headlines and content rule, regardless of accuracy. On the other hand, accurate, reliable information is harder to sort from misinformation and disinformation. Just consider that in 2018, a study from MIT found that false stories are 70% more likely to be retweeted than true stories and that true stories take six times as long to reach people as false stories, giving a modern confirmation of the Jonathan Swift quote, falsehood flies and the truth comes limping after it. Another title worth checking out is the documentary The Social Dilemma, which tells the story about how big tech uses our lives, that is, our experiences and data, as the raw materials to feed their algorithms which are designed to increase engagement on those platforms and make more money for those platforms and their advertisers. There's a lot to unpack here, including ideas like surveillance capitalism, algorithmic bias, and filter bubbles. We do cover filter bubbles in an upcoming video, 
but I encourage you to check out the links in the video description and contact me for a deeper dive into these issues. Let me close by giving just one example of how lucrative it can be to create fake news. The creator of abcnews.com.co, one of the most popular fake news websites of 2016, generated $10,000 a month from ad revenue at the height of the 2016 presidential campaign. What do you think are some red flags that a news website might be fake or misleading? And, given the economic incentives driving online mis- and disinformation, what will you do differently the next time you look for news information? This concludes our video on the economics of the virtual world. For RTC students, faculty, and staff, if you have questions or would like to set up a workshop to explore these topics further, or would like help embedding news and information literacy into your course content, please email me at dzang at rtc.edu.